Junior, just a week back into the UK now. Firstly, how are you since returning from AFCON? Um, no, I'm better now. I was, I was ill um, for a few days, but all good and healthy and ready, ready to go again. So your first experience of a major international tournament, how was that experience for you? That was a great experience, to be honest. Um, yeah, I can't, words can't really explain how, how I felt. Um, when I was there, to be honest, um, representing my country in a major tournament is something I didn't really think would happen, obviously growing up and watching this tournament. So to be a part of that was an unreal, unreal experience for me and one I'll never forget. It's so good to be a part of because knowing that I'm representing my country at a major tournament, um, you've got that kind of proud feeling and that kind of responsibility to Make make your country proud because it's not just not just like for example your club um, people supporting your club it's the whole country behind you your family um, everyone's behind you so you've got that real that real responsibility to try and perform and pressure on you as well. When you reflect on the the experience as a whole, what benefits have you taken personally in, in terms of your performances? I feel like um, the type of game. There's a different type of game out there. A lot of the teams do try and like, play football, but there's a lot of like back to front as well. So it's like kind of, kind of like adapt. I need to adapt, um, adapt my game and maybe kind of change, change a few things as well. But I've all learned that, and it's going to help me and put me in good stead for future tournaments. We were all following the, the last group game in particular. Tell us what that was like to be part of. That is the most craziest game I've ever watched or been part of, to be honest. Um, yeah, we had to win and I think we went 1-0 down and then we equalised. They scored again 2-1, quite late on as well. So I think at that point we think we're out, but then we equalised. But we're still out at that point because we have to win. And then, yeah, we're just trying to put a lot of pressure on them. And then we, we get the winner in the, in I think, 94th minute. And everyone just goes crazy in celebrations as well. Everyone from the bench runs over cele celebrating. And then I think they, they score, but it's a handball. And when that went in, everyone's like, heart oh, was in their mouth. Everyone thought that like, we're out. And then it went to VAR. Also, that's my first like, kind of taste of VAR as well. So when they went to VAR and they got disallowed, everyone was just so relieved. And when that final whistle went, it was just that moment of like relief, literally, and we just felt so proud. Um, everyone kind of doubted us and thought we'd, we'd be we'd be out. So to kind of turn that on its head was was crazy. A lot of preparation went into into that game, and you kind of realise how how much is kind of on the line, and you just have to be so prepared for it. Clearly the call up in the tournament came at a time where you were really settling into the team here. It looked like you were really enjoying working under Steven Schumacher. What sort of about Steven Schumacher's style has suited the way you play? Because it looked like you were really thriving under him. Yeah, I think um, I'm all that like for his, his intensity in the, the way he plays um, in both attacking and defending. So that's, that's where what I base my game around. And, I feel like he's really helped me in the short time I've like, been with him. He's really helped me um, improve that. So um, I'm just excited for what the future holds and to keep learning and improving under it. Obviously it's a different, completely different group of boys that I'm with when I'm with the national team. So it's like a family here and yeah, obviously missed all the boys and happy to be back. What are your ambitions now for the final three months of the campaign? First and foremost, I want to play my part in helping the team climb up the table. Um, I think everyone knows we know where where we where we should be, and we've got a great squad. And I feel like we need to start picking up results. So I just want to play my part in that and try to be a consistent figure in the team and keep working hard and play my part to help the team. You've received a lot of messages, I'm sure, from supporters on social media during the past uh, month or so, in particular. What's your message to them for the, the running, the final three months of the campaign? My message to them is where it has been for the whole season, to be honest, just to stick with us and keep supporting us and the results will turn in our favour. We've just got to stick together as a group 
was one club and um, we will push up the table and improve. You had to Blackburn at the weekend. What, what sort of game are you expecting when we head to Ewood Park? Expecting a competitive game, to be honest. Um, obviously, the last the last time we played them, I feel like they were the better team. Um, but I feel like now we we know what we kind of know what we need to do to be honest. Um, we've got the players, we've got the players, the squad for it. So it's just about going over there and imposing our game on them. Three and a half thousand fans going to be behind you. What sort of role could they play? That's a yeah. It's a great. It's a great following. It's unreal, and they've been like that all season, following us away. So I feel like they'll they'll be a great help to us. They'll be great support, and we just need them to be as loud as they can for us and see us through the game.